Hello there, age quizzes. Happy Hump Day. It's Mad Science Trivia Night, babies. Y'all ready to do some crazy experimentation? Oh, right here on your phone. Yeah, I'm excited. I did not prepare for this. <sighs> I'm the money flipper. Oh, yeah, we about to get scientific. Also, sorry for the, the, the delay, okay, sometimes stuff happens, we're live, so anything can happen, but we're here, and I'm glad y'all are here. I love you. All right, this is the last day of season eight. That means this is the only game left to play to level up before the finale. The season eight finale is tomorrow, Halloween night, and we want you to trick and treat with us. All right, send us photos of you dressed up in your costumes while playing HQ, your username, and we'll send you some extra lives. Yeah. I know you all got some great costumes. Anyway, let me tell you what games we got coming up for you. Season nine kicks off Friday, November 1st, and Friday is all about sweet, sweet music here at HQ. That's right, every Friday we'll have a new round of HQ tunes for you, hosted by the lyrical gangster herself, Melody Alana. Then, this Sunday, meet Sarah Priebus in Stars Hollow for Gilmore Girls Trivia. Stars Hollow is always just, you know, everybody just walk around in flannels and stuff all the time. It's just autumn, the whole time. It's crazy. Then on Monday, something completely different than the wholesome Gil Gil Gilmore Girls trivia. Martin Scorsese trivia. Yeah. What, what? It's going to be crazy. I met Martin Scorsese when I was a senior in high school. He told me I was a damn good actor. And that has stuck with me for my entire adult career. Here we go. But he hasn't put me in a movie, so... Maybe he was lying. <laughs> Tonight, we got 15 questions all about mad science. <laughs> you got 10 seconds to tap the correct answer. Get them all right and you win. It's as easy as pie. Now, before we start the questions, let me reintroduce yourself, myself, to you. I shall reintroduce, you know what, okay, here we go. Safety goggles are very important when you do experimentations, right? Clearly, I would know I am a scientist. Yeah, so, uh, wait, here we go. This is some science. Let me take a little. The science coffee. I'm gonna make elephant toothpaste, whatever that is, right here, right now. Y'all ready for this? Here we go. All right, directions. I take some H hydrogen peroxide. Ah, oh, dang it, I can't get the little thing off with my gloves. Boop. Okay, and this is, I'm gonna put this into my, my beaker. It sounds so pretty. Science! I don't know how much to put. That's not a good rule for doing science, right? Then, uh, what else? Hmm. Oh, into, I put this, into this, right? Yep, one squirt. That's good. That seems good. It's dish soap. All right, and now uh, a little bit of secret food coloring. Ten drops to be exact. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, now the dirt. Bring it around town. Look at that, so blue. Blue da ba dee da ba da. I gotta go faster. Okay, and then some yeast. <laughs> Sticks here. Running out of time. All right. Get that going. Stir it going. See that? I think that, I don't know if that's enough. All right. Here we go. The yeast. And then we pour it. Science! Whoa! <laughs> oh, that was cool. This is making a mess, man. Wow! Three, 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 three. Oh, Why does it smell like that? Why does it smell that bad? Ah. I am flabbergasted! Science. 
I'm gonna leave it here the whole show. All right, here we go. Nothing to it but to HQ it, let's get it scientific with question number one. What term refers to scientific sounding beliefs that aren't backed up by science? Pseudoscience, super sapience, or sound of silence? What's it gonna be? <laughs> yeah, I got some psychic powers, but only when the molecular polarity is right and there are no sunspots. That's pseudoscience! And the best way to identify it is knowing real science clearly. Your yeah, boy knows a thing or three about science. 73,573 in the place to be. Moving on from Q1 to question number two. What y'all trying to do? Here we go. What inventor designed flying machines long before electric power was harnessed? Johannes Gutenberg, Galileo Galilei, or Leonardo da Vinci? Hmm, sometimes madness is in the eye of the beholder. But, Leonardo, what were you thinking, huh? A human-powered helicopter? I'm not even talking about the Flappy Bird's wing contraption. Stick to paintings, player. 63,910 of you got it right. Oh boy. This happened to me one time when I put too much soap in the dishwasher. Yeah, make sure you grab some extra lives right now. Click that little pop-up, the pop-up. Pop it, pop it, pop it. Yeah, pop it like it's hot. Click that thing and get some lives. All right. <laughs> or you can get them throughout the game whenever you want if you just tap that little heart icon down there on the bottom right side of your screen. On to question number three. Here we go. In 2006, scientists were acclaimed for studying the lack of headaches in which animal? Grizzly bears, geckos, or woodpeckers? Hmm. All right, if it seems obvious to you, try hitting your head against a hard surface 20 times a second. Because that's what woodpeckers do, and they don't get headaches. 50,567 of you got woodpeckers. <laughs> that was my Woody. <laughs> All right, look at how steamed up my glasses are. My head is steamy. Woo! All right. Time for another one. Here we go. Question number four. Which type of cow tends to produce more milk? Named cow, unnamed cow, or no difference? What's it gonna be? Check it. If you're unnamed yourself, let me know in the chat. But I bet you are named because naming things helps. It even helps cows produce more milk. That's science! Oh my gosh, that's a savage question. Well, savage question song. Sorry you got it wrong. Savage question song. That's a savage question song. All right, 27,208 of you got it right. Oh boy. Check it, you also don't have to wait till 9 p.m. every night to earn points. Player, player, players, you can play our daily challenges anytime and earn points and coins for every question you get right. Try it out. Yeah, it's time for question five for the children. My hands are sweating too. <laughs> Q5, here we go. What inventor proposed a phonograph in the Statue of Liberty's mouth to audibly welcome immigrants? Nikola Tesla, Henry Ford, or Thomas Edison? Who done did it? I think it, I think it, my experiment's done. Doesn't want to do it anymore. Okay, he was as much a promoter as inventor and one of his inventions was the phonograph. So, no big surprise, this loony idea came from Thomas Edison. You win some, you lose some, Tommy. 44,422. Just nailed it at Q5. We're moving on to question number six. All the other kids with the question six, you better tap, better tap, tap the right answers. <sighs> get a point multiplier while you're at it too. Cause those get you to new levels. And again, the season's over tomorrow. So if you're almost there, just tip yourself over the edge. This increases your chances of winning tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Question six. 
In 2001, a man successfully patented what invention in Australia? Wheel, flying carpet, or telephone? <laughs> According to um, Australia's innovation patent, what is it, uh, 211-00012? John Keogh is the inventor of the wheel. It's crazy to think we've only had wheels for 18 years. Yeah, imagine how history would have been different if we'd had wheels for thousands of years. It's pretty nuts. 22,000. Oh my gosh, that's another savage question. Is this okay to be breathing in? I don't know. It's totally safe. It's dish soap and yeast. Okay, we're moving on to question number seven. An infamous 1950 laboratory kit sold to children featured which of these components? Uranium, arsenic, or live spider eggs? The 50s were a wild time. And if you wanted to get especially wild, you could pick up a Gilbert U-238 atomic laboratory, which handily featured very real and very radioactive uranium. What you do with it is up to you. That's another savage question! It's getting crazy! Whoa! Mad science! Oh, we're doing mad science! <laughs> I am a mat scientist. I suck at winking. Uh, you deserve better jokes from me, I'm sorry. 19,000 of you got it right. We're on to question number eight. Here we go. Q8. Scientists have successfully trained pigeons to tell the difference between which of these things? Saturday and Sunday, Picasso and Monet paintings, or Diet Coke and Diet Pepsi? Shout out to researchers at uh, Keogh University for teaching birds the intricacies of art. Bring a trained pigeon to your next auction to make sure you're not getting duped. Picasso, Monet. 13,806 of you got it right. Teaching birds how to tell paintings apart? That's crazy. That's some mad science right there. Yeah. Okie dokie. <laughs> Here we go. You ready? I'm ready. Question number nine. Which of these everyday phenomena has not been fully explained by science? Shower curtain billowing, goosebumps, or morning bad breath? Hmm. I've experienced all three of these everyday phenomena. Okay, it seems so simple. You take a shower and the curtain billows inwards towards you. But why? Nobody knows for sure. Horizontal vortex, Bernoulli effect, condensation, buoyancy. If you know, let me know in the chat. Bernoulli effect. What'd I say, Bernoulli? It looked like a pasta sauce, I'm not gonna lie. 6,031 of you got it right, that's another savage question! Whoa! Oh. Savage question song! Yeah, all right, moving on to Q10, my friends. Time to get it in, here we go. The Skull Hoax refers to an article published in an academic journal despite being what? Totally bogus, completely plagiarized, or written in Klingon. Okay, here we go. Transgressing the boundaries towards a transformative hermeneutics of quantum gravity. That meaningless title kicked off the skull hoax where the editors of social text proved they weren't doing their homework. It was totally bogus. 8,136 got it right. I said a word wrong somewhere in the middle, but you got it right. Herm Hermeneutics. 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 I learned so much at this job. Question number 11. All dogs go to heaven. Here we go. Which of these is a real invention? Mayonnaise gloves, ketchup stopwatch, or wasabi fire alarm? That's some mad science I play right there. <laughs> I've always wanted to be in a lab coat. I want to do something else now. 
Okay, it's hard to wake up a sleeping person with bad hearing just with sound, right? But turns out you can blast them with some wasabi infused air and they will wake up real quick. 8,410 of you, I need one of these. I would not be late ever again if somebody's just sprayed a little wasabi. What the, oh, get out of here. Who let you in? Sushi man? Okay, <laughs> here we go. Question number 12, babies. All right, in a study of drug spider behavior, what drug in small doses led to more geometric webs? LSD, marijuana, or caffeine? <laughs> Okie dokie. Oh man, we can't predict what effect these drugs will have on your creativity or work ethic, but spiders built some robust webs on LSD. Caffeine spiders did a rushed slapdash job, and on pot they asked if they could crash on their brother-in-law's couch, which was also on a web. Bro, can I stare at your web this weekend, man? I, I can't find my keys. <laughs> you don't have keys, you're a spider. 5,867 of you picked LSD. That was the right answer. And LSD stands for let spiders do drugs. <laughs> question 13, here we go. Oh God, I've been dreading this question since we went over it earlier today. I'm sorry. <sighs> okay, here we go. Question 13. The concept that the hair on a coconut cannot be combed without creating a cowlick is called what? Hairy ball theorem, trick sack hypothesis, or nut principle? <laughs> oh God, I'm so immature. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm crying. Okay, the name is unfortunate, but it's all too real. It says that you cannot comb a hairy ball <laughs> or a coconut without creating a cowlick. But you can neatly comb a hairy donut, though I'm not sure why you'd want to do that at all. Hairy ball theorem, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> why y'all do this to me, huh? Why y'all do this to me all the time? 4,472 of you got hairy ball theorem. Uh, you should probably see a doctor. <laughs> Here we go. Question number 14. Which of these organisms has been proven to solve mazes? Water bear, mussel, or slime mold? <laughs> oh. Mine are smooth as eggs. <laughs> that was a Dave Chappelle quote. Okay. If you're ever stuck in a maze, like really, really stuck, hopefully you got some slime mold with you because they can solve puzzles and mazes. Slime mold, 4,689 of you got it right. We're moving on to the final question of the evening. Woo! Just sliding. Rolling right along like some hairless balls. Q15, all right, compared to swimming in water. A human swimming through syrup will swim how fast? Much faster, much slower, or roughly the same speed? It may be counterintuitive, but you swim basically as fast through gloop as you would through water. So, go ahead and fill your pools with syrup. Or don't, that's up to you. Oh my gosh, that's a savage question. Yeah. And 1,360 of you just won HQ Trivia. Woo! Yeah. Elephants don't use toothpaste. No, it doesn't smell bad at all. It smells like a weird beer. Like, a, like you go to your friend's house and they got some beer you never heard of and they're like, no, you gotta try it. You gotta try it. So the local, I, I made it myself in my closet. 
I'm a home brewer. Congratulations to Moopingsd and Gina Bobbin. Optima. Moopig03. Oh, Moopig and Moopig. Lake Bunny. Woods Baker. Ninoosh. 45 candles. And the rest. Y'all did that. I'm so proud. Y'all just won HQ Trivia. I have been your host with the most. Matt Scientist. Follow me on the socials. I'll see you all later. Good night! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!